Hello, kindred spirits, and welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin, and together we are going to be diving in to see not only the main energies over your next two weeks, but also going into a detailed week-by-week energy charm forecast. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and anyone new who may be joining us here on the channel today. I do pick a card readings every single Monday like this, as well as more charm casting as well sprinkled on the channel. And if you're interested in the giant master guide video I have on charm casting as we go through this, then definitely feel free to check that out as well. But feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. But today, like I said, we're going to be really looking into the charms, looking into the intricacies of your next two weeks. And uh, if you want to look deeper into anything that we talk about here, then feel free to check out a snail mail reading or uh, reach out for a snail mail reading as I love to do those where I send a letter to you in the mail. I typewrite it on a vintage typewriter. I wax seal it closed for your eyes only. And I make sure to put a lot of care, consideration, and time into those readings as well. So if you have a question, or a theme or uh, something you'd really like answered, then definitely feel free to reach out. And if you want to support the channel through more magical means, then feel free to check out the Maybon spell and ritual papers that I have out. So feel free to check out all the helpful and honest reviews for those offerings and others down below and through my Instagram and Linktree. And let's go ahead and look at the piles here. So we have three different piles here, each of them unique. Here with pile number one, if you're feeling called to this crystal of the red tiger's eye, then this might be the pile for you. Here for pile number two, if you're feeling called to this one, it might be because of these little speckles here for this snowflake obsidian. So if you're feeling called to this one, that might be for you for pile number two. And then last but not least here for pile number three, if you're feeling called to this more yellow or uh, the standard tiger's eye, then this is possibly the pile for you. So that might be pile number three. But before you start heading off to the timestamps, I like to invite you to take a deep and cleansing breath here with me to really connect with your guides, connect with the piles, and connect with your own intuition. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath together here now. And as always, there's no right or wrong ways to choose your piles here. You can choose all three of the piles. You can choose a pile and change your mind. You can take little bits from each of them. There really are no rules. So feel free to do as you'd like. All of the timestamps will be down below in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video. And if you are interested in any of the ways in which you can support this channel through the magical spell and ritual papers, handmade earrings, and other sorts of charm casting related things as well as those snail mail readings then feel free to reach out but we're going to go ahead and get started here with pile number one hello group one if you've decided to choose this piece of red tiger's eye then this is the pile for you as we are going to be exploring what you have coming in for your next two weeks we're going to be doing a week by week charm cast on the charm mat here today with the charms we're gonna look into what your numbers have to say your letters what the tarot cards have to say all of it to look into the whole of your next two weeks. So let's go ahead and get started. Feel free to get yourself settled, cozy, get a nice snack, a little cozy blanket, whatever you'd like. And feel free to use your own intuition as always, 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 always. I just like to remind you guys, you are totally open to use your own intuition, see what comes forward, especially with charms since they're such a unique tool. Um, I think this one is always really fun to use it for as an intuitive practice for yourself. So... We are going to begin by looking into your letter tiles. We're going to cast some letters on here and see if any initials, dates, names, places, whatever we could spell out or oracle messages come forward. Um, so let's go ahead and open this real quick and see what we get for you. Interesting how you got art and then suddenly, oh, almost like you're afraid to 
make creative mistakes or things like that. It feels like a perfectionism message coming forward. Even if you're not an artist, it just um, coming from a, a reader here who is an artist, I, I can't help but get this feeling of like someone going through some sort of creative block um, or just feeling like it's either a creative block or you're totally following some creative chaos because it's like you're like just flowing in with all of the mistakes and seeing what they they kind of create almost in a chaotic way um so you have you have art here so creativity being a huge part of your next two weeks even if you're not don't consider yourself creative this can still just be talking about um you know connecting with your more creative side maybe you're connecting with your kids through it maybe you are opening a coloring book for the first time in years maybe you're just thinking outside of the box in your personal field of study and things that you enjoy um regardless you have art coming forward an artist lens you have o e e o a r t Another E, another E. Oh my gosh, are we only going to get art? An N and a D. Not a lot we can spell with so many vowels. Whenever I see a ton of vowels coming up, to me it always tells me that over the next two weeks you might have a difficult time conveying what you want to say. So there's more chance or you're more prone to possibly having more miscommunication or not being able to be more direct with your communication uh, as like if you imagine writing an entire sentence and you take all the consonants out it's kind of hard to decipher what's there but if you put all the consonants back in and take all the vowels out um, which would be the opposite of what you got here then you'd be very direct but it'd be kind of uh, clunky at the same time so there's a kind of a an off balance here showcasing a lot of these vowels and maybe a bit of miscommunication. You have Ned, Art, um, you have a den as well. So maybe just wanting to go to like your art den. Some of you are definitely artists or so you, you really enjoy creativity for sure because it feels like you just want to really hone into that. So the creative side is coming forward heavily for you guys. If you haven't checked out the creative readings that I have on your creative gifts and magic, definitely feel free to check those out um, after this one. But I'm not really getting a lot to play with here, so I'm just going to leave you with art done. Uh, sorry about that, but... That's what we're really getting. So maybe that's all you really needed was Ned, Art Den, and um, Art O, I suppose. So we're going to move on to your um, numbers and see what they have to say, though, because we might get a little bit more here. Um, there's also Dot here and Do. Interesting. So we'll see. Um, that immediately made me think of like doe, a deer, a female deer. So maybe it's also less of like an artist and maybe some of you guys are into theater or are seeing a musical or something like that. Um, yeah, but that came through too. So <laughs> let's go ahead and pull you some numbers as well. So these ones we're going to be seeing any angel numbers coming forward, repeating numbers, numerology. Uh, we're going to be looking into any dates that are important. The colors might even be important. So let's see. Okay, two numbers, very simple. You have both six and two. Actually, I believe this is a nine, actually. But I suppose it could go either way. 29 being really important, maybe a birthday. Um, 92, who knows? And um, yeah, they're both in orange. Orange being a very electrifying and um, ambitious, exciting, fiery kind of uh, color. So this just tells me that you're maybe feeling very fired up. Something is really building up for you. So I'm very curious to see if you get a lot of wands. Two is a number of partnership. Nine, a number of almost finishing something. So something that you are working on, completing projects, and being just at the edge of completing something that you're quite passionate about. And then also just feeling a lot more passion and excitement within relationships. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of everything that I'm really getting here because we just had the two. But we are going to look into your main energy over the next two weeks. So obviously we're going to go into the nitty gritty here with the charms. But we're going to look into one specific card to see 
kind of the overarching theme and energy coming forward for you. So group one, feel free to send your own energy through to the charms and the cards as we go through these, but group one, I felt one, but I'm not sure where it is. I think it's right here. Ooh, interesting that you would have all this fiery, artsy, creative, exciting energy going on. And then, and even like the, the, um, crystal that you chose is very fiery. Um, but you got the four of torches and the four of torches is, is kind of the torches are burnt out here. Right. Um, it, I always feel like they're in like this little cave or cavern, but it's like kind of raining down on them in a way too. Um, they just feel like they're kind of just sitting resting after a difficult time you know after you've like done a ton of yard work and then you lay down on the couch and then you suddenly are flopping down like this person that's the feeling that I'm getting here so you might find yourself um yes feeling very ambitious passionate about your your goals and the things that you're working towards and even your creative energy but I also think you're gonna maybe hit a wall or a creative not even a creative block like literally like you're just like oh I need a rest I am going and going and going and going and going and there's this feeling of just like making sure you don't get burnout or kind of hitting a an exhaustion period making sure to take time off to slow down to um check in with yourself and to make sure that it doesn't become your whole world you know what I mean I feel like some of you know what that means like when you literally end up having it take over everything um as an artist I definitely have that where sometimes I'll have weeks where I eat breathe and sleep art (laughs) and uh forget to take shower and maybe eat So these are things that maybe I'm kind of feeling for you guys too. But let's go ahead and look at the nitty gritty here and really get into the details with the charm casting um, portion. So if you are new to charm casting here and you haven't really seen me before, uh, we're going to use this specific charm casting mat. If you're interested in your own mat, do feel free to reach out. But uh, this charm casting cloth is set up so that anything that falls here is going to be more on that four of torches and the main energy is coming through for you anything that falls here on the left side is going to be related to week one and then same thing here on the second side of or the right side for week two we'll talk about the moons individually if anything shows up there but before we do the charms we'll first start with some tarot tiles so let's pull these first Feel free to send your energy in. Let's see what you get here. I feel like I've like twisted these somehow. Okay, let's see what you what you get here. Group two, or group one, two weeks. Ooh, one already flying out. These are talkative today. Okay, so we have a couple showing up upright, which is is really nice to see. We've got the Hermit, the World card, we've got the Ten of Cups, and the Eight of Pentacles. Uh, But let's see what the charms have to say as well. So again, feel free to connect with them. Let's mix them up. fallen off here so I'm gonna see the ones that fell in my lap we've got a letter and a little hair and a heart (laughs) long hair problems but um so let's go ahead and begin here in the center so more to do with that main energy we already had the energy of the four of torches right um so when we're looking at everything else you have here you have three other um sort of cards and charms to look into you have the eight of pentacles and the eight of pentacles they are hard working it's a hard working card it's about someone really deeply focused sometimes I call this the tunnel vision um card because there's like a little castle wee 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 back behind them but they're not focused on anything that's happening over there. They're not focused on who could be spooking behind them. They're so deeply focused on what's right in front of them. And they're so tunneled in that um, 
they, that nothing else really matters, you know what I mean? And so that's the same feeling I was getting earlier with this like exhaustion, this deep focus that you can get maybe stuck in. I feel like this is a history of something you've come across before. We've got the Liberty Bell here with, um, uh, 1776. And with this, um, bell, I also think of it as like, again, like a crack, right? So it's kind of like you can go and go and go imagine this bell dinging and dinging and dinging and dinging until it cracks. And that's the feeling that I keep getting, this feeling that like you're going really, really hard um, and then it it's going to be a sudden drop. Um, it, but it's going to be successful. The things that you're doing are quite successful. We've got the celebration charm. We've got this kind of makes me think of the six of uh, wands. So there's, there's a lot of creative energy. There's a lot of um, ambition and drive and motivation and, and momentum towards your next two weeks. But there is a need for balance here for sure. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here for you in the first week as well. We'll go ahead and zoom you back out a little bit. You have the hermit showing up here, which is, again, that same feeling I was getting where the castle is way, 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 way back here. And you're hermiting in. You're taking time off. You're maybe not physically taking time off, like, from work or anything. But you could be just, you know, when you're home, you're home and you're doing the thing that you're doing. And on the weekends, it's, you know, all you're doing. Or if you're not even able to to um, work on uh, whatever it is that you're very excited about. Uh, I do think that you're constantly having it kind of running in the back of your mind, which is, you know, also causing some of that same deep focus of tunnel vision. Um, you're very, very much excited about it. We got like the, the, um, what's it called? The page of cups showing up here alongside the, um, the charm of taking the road less traveled. And so when we're looking at this one, we're taking a different path, a path that you haven't taken before. So a lot of, again, with that, what I talked about earlier with your letters showcasing art with that O, it's like you're following the imperfections of your creative genius. So that's really exciting. Uh, other things that you have showing up here, you've got the draft, a new perspective, lots of things showcasing a new path, a new perspective, a new idea coming in. Um, so if you felt stuck in the past or moving into this reading, you're like, where is all this drive coming from? I feel like a new perspective is a huge reason where and why this creative energy is coming forward or why this um, uh, drive and motivation is coming forward for you in the first week. And then you also have the safety safeguard um, key um, right underneath the uh, or right on top rather. Why do I don't have words today. My words are fumbly, but um, you have it right with the nine of cups here. So you're safeguarding your what's fulfilling to you, what you're you're kind of putting it under lock and key. So it also makes me think that this could be like a secret project that you're working on or a project that is just really close to your heart, something that you're very again, like passionate and, and have a lot of drive for, but maybe not something you want to share with everyone or it's not um that you don't want to share your time with everyone to be able to create or work. Uh, so there's something about that showing up here where you're just really wanting to safeguard what's making you feel so excited and um, let it be your top priority in the first week for sure. The second week, you've got a couple of other things coming in. You've got the uh, unknown charm showing up here. I always also think of this as like a little scrying mirror. Uh, if you guys are familiar with those. So it's kind of like a crystal ball, like you're looking into it and seeing what comes back. So a lot of intuitive energy, seeking out answers and clarity in the second week with something that maybe has got you a little bit stuck or questions that might be coming forward. You have um, three different letters showing up here, two in the... Oh, actually, you have, you have, you have several letters. So where we were talking about earlier where you were missing some letters, if you're looking for the letter Z, W, A, or U... Um, they have now arrived, specifically Z and U in the second week. And then you have the, the world card. And the world card is all about um, something coming full circle. We talked about you getting that number nine earlier and needing to finish up projects or complete something. You're completing something for sure. Something's coming full circle. You're tying up loose ends that are happening here in the, the second week. Maybe it's loose ends of things that are, like I said, that um, you've had so much of your 
passion and drive and creativity and motivation and focus on in the first week that by the second week there's like oh wait there's other things I needed to do and finish up and complete possibly related to a z or a u uh you also have the fork charm and the uh, Ten of Cups. So going from the Nine of Cups to the Ten of Cups, I think you're still feeling very fulfilled. You're feeling like on a high almost in the second week. I feel like you're just feeling on cloud nine, uh, which is again where I was talking about. Like I feel like you have a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, and I do think that there is going to be a drop. Does it need to be super drastic or super dramatic? Not necessarily. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a bad drop, but it's just being aware that, you know, that energy is going to kind of roller coaster. So these next two weeks are, you're on the high though. And then you have the the little fork charm, which makes me think of like a doppel top, not doppelganger, doppel doodle hopper or whatever they call it in a uh, little mermaid. So it feels like, um, a fascination or a wonder about something. Maybe that's why you're asking questions or trying to find clarity. There's something you're wondering about or getting, um, ideas and inspired by um, in the second week as well. So I really feel like you've got a lot of great things coming in. There could be a little bit of jealousy and envy happening with the envious heart just before the, the new moon. So this might have even happened before this reading because of um, where the moons are positioned right now, but uh, maybe that envy is, is kind of the root of some of the things that have come in here. Um, but it could be related to an A or a W here. So with that all said, that's everything that I have here for you for your next two weeks, group one. I do hope that this has been useful to you. I do hope that it has given you some ideas, some excitement. Uh, I sure would be if I got this pile over your next two weeks, but definitely take care of yourself. Look after yourself. Find a kind of healthy balance for you. Um, grounding yourself, grounding exercises could be really useful, especially with that dough coming forward again. Uh, so I really do hope that this has been useful. If it has, do be sure to give this video a like. Let me know in the comments down below what you saw, um, how your own intuition was seeing this reading. I'm always curious to hear. And if you haven't already, do feel free to subscribe as I put out new pick a card readings like this one every single Monday. And I also put out grimoire tours, um, other art magic that I, especially if you guys are creative, might really enjoy. And I even have a master guide on charm casting that if you got excited about charm casting here today might be something to check out. Uh, and if you want to dive even deeper into your own personal and private snail mail reading, feel free to reach out for those as well. And you could also get some Mabon spell and ritual papers for your art magic. So those are great ways to support the channel and um, keep this place running. And if you are interested, it'll all be down below. But with that all said, thank you so much for hanging out here with me today, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group 2! If you decide to choose this piece of snowflake obsidian, then this is the pile for you. As we begin to really dive deep into what you have coming in for your next two weeks, we're going to be doing that charm cast here on the charm casting mat with several different charms and tarot tiles. We're going to be playing around with the numbers and letters and uh, even looking into your main energy for the next two weeks. But let's go ahead and start getting right on into it. So feel free to get yourself cozy, settled, comfortable. And as always, a reminder that this is sort of a co-created reading with you and I. Uh, so feel free to use your own intuition. See what comes through, especially with the charms as they can be very charming and they have a lot of intricate details that can come forward. So see what they really highlight and spark up for you with your own um, intuition. And if you don't really use your intuition a lot for divination, things like that, then definitely feel free to use this as an intuitive exercise. But we are going to start first with your letter tiles. So with the letters, we're going to be looking into any names, dates, places, um, initials that are coming forward that are significant over the next two weeks. And we'll also be spelling out mostly some oracle messages. So feel free to see and read what comes comes up for you as well. But let's go ahead and pull some. Ooh, we 
got the C. I don't think you can actually see it. <laughs> uh, but a C actually flew out outside of the bounds here. So it could be an initial where they're feeling kind of missing or disjointed outside of the box here. Um, maybe you're not feeling like you're seeing someone with the letter C. Maybe they're vacationing or um, you're just not seeing someone or seeing there's some sort of missing piece here related to a C. You also have an R, a Q, an A, another A, an I, a G, an X, and an S. Interesting. Whenever I see the X come forward, it obviously makes me think of like an X friend, an X family member, an X um, romantic partner, things like that showing up here. So there could be an ex showing up, whether it's just on your mind, um, like reminiscing about things or um, maybe finding closure about something. But regardless, that's coming forward, whether in your mind or possibly with someone actually in your life. I'm seeing car here. Very simple message, but maybe something to do with your car, especially with C being the missing part or missing piece. Maybe it's just checking back over your car, making sure you have gas in it before you leave, um, double checking your oil, things like that, making sure it's in, you know, maybe not tip top shape, but like at least driving shape, um, something like that showing up here with car. Um, it could also just be that you're maybe driving or traveling quite a lot over the next two weeks. Whenever I see the Q show up here, especially with another A, it makes me think of like finding, asking questions and actually finding the answers. So there could be that you're finding clarity or information to questions that you've been maybe seeking answers to recently. And you even have gas showing up here. Um, so it really could be something about needing to put gas in your car. It can be simple messages like this sometimes. Um, just making sure that you you know, I've checked those sorts of things, maybe check your um, gas isn't leaking, things like that, you never know. But that's kind of everything that I'm getting here. You got really practical messages, which is really interesting. Um, gas can also be related to, obviously, like um, bowel movements and things like that. So maybe looking after some gut health over the next two weeks. Obviously, I am not a dietitian though, so uh, feel free to take that how you do and with a grain of salt there. I'm also not a mechanic, but let's go ahead and move it to your numbers. So we're going to see with the numbers, any angel numbers coming forward, numerological messages, looking into any specific dates and uh, numbers that are just really important and, and impactful over your next two weeks. So let's go ahead and pull these. lots of numbers. Pile number one only had two, so uh, very interesting. You have a five, a nine, and a one, and all of these are in blue. A very calming, sometimes sad, but I don't know. I'm getting calming number from this, or calming effect to this. So the 15th, the 5th, the 9th, the 19th, all important dates may be coming forward that are more calm. Oh, you've got another five showing up here and a two. Um, interesting almost as like 1995 here is what my brain saw. Um, so yeah, 1955. Maybe you guys have like a really old car, uh, an antique car or, or a vintage car. The 12th also might be important. Two is also a number of partnerships. So there could be some romantic things going on here, especially with it being in like this very red color. But because you did get that X showing up here, it could be an X that you're not like on great terms with um in which this is related to because that red can also mean caution it's a fine line between caution and passion there right uh so that's everything that i have here for your numbers but let's go ahead and pull you your main tarot card for the next two weeks so we're going to go deeper into the charms of course um and the tarot tiles with that but this one is going to be specifically just an overarching message to get us started a theme for you for the next two weeks so what is that major theme and energy coming forward for the next two weeks for group two here kind of feel like it's this one that kind of uh, fl tried to flick out uh, so yeah you have the prince of cups interesting the prince of cups is also giving that same energy of all this blue and then like these red fishes hanging out at the bottom 
I always love when color lines up like that. Um, but the Prince of Cups, this one is a lot to do with, um, as you can see, they're kind of totally focused. All of their focus is towards their emotions, their emotional state, how they're feeling. They're also very, um, the things that drive them and keep them mo moving and motivated, as all the princes are all about movement, uh, is all related to your emotions. Your emotions are really driving you this next two weeks. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in the driver's seat there, literally with the car, but that you might be you know, blindsided by other things because all your, your focus is on this cup right in front of you and the cup represents your emotions, represents how you're feeling. So I feel like your emotional landscape is really going to be driving you over these next two weeks. That can be a really good thing, right? If we're super passionate about something that can drive us to go see that movie or go see that friend or, you know, profess our love or whatever it might be. It can be dramatic or as simple as possible, but, um, or as much as you can think here, but regardless, it's driving you. It is what's moving you, sort of like these fishes are being moved by the sea. So I'm curious to see how that continues to move into your charms and cards here, um, or tarot card, uh, tarot tiles rather, but we're going to be putting them here on the charm casting mat here again. So if you guys have been here before, you probably already know this spiel, but, uh, if you haven't, uh, Anything that falls here in the center is going to be related to the main card that you got earlier. Anything on this side of the line is going to be related to uh, week one. And then here on the right side will be related to week two. And we'll talk about the moon phases individually if they show up for timing. And also, if you're interested in charm casting yourself, I have an entire master guide and I talk about how I use this charm casting cloth. So if you'd like your own custom charm ca casting cloth, then definitely feel free to reach out because I'd love to make one for you. But we're going to start first with your tarot tiles. So let's start here. Feel free to send your own energy into the dark abyss and see what comes back. So here we go. The next two weeks Ooh. I'm already feeling these ones. Okay, this one fell off, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and we will just keep having all these little dog hairs showing up. Uh, but we'll go ahead and look at these in a minute and explore them. But let's go ahead and pull you some more details here. We need some details. Details. So feel free to send your energy in. And we'll pull these as well. Go ahead and zoom you in here and we'll have a look first at the center. So we're going to be expanding upon the uh, Prince of Cups that you already had here. And what's interesting is the emotion that's most coming forward here is anxiety or nervousness, feeling a little anxious about something coming forward here that's been on your path for a while. You do have the, the charm of um, imagining like spirit guys working in the background to to help make something happen for you, right? So they're working towards a goal for you. That's what I always think of. Like, so there's definitely someone guiding you or helping you out right now, but you're still feeling quite anxious. Um, it's kind of like it's hanging over your head. Whether it's a good goal or not, it's still kind of hanging over your head. So I feel like the emotion that's driving you right now is um, anxiety, nervousness, uh, or fear. Uh, it can also just be like general fears over something coming forward and a lot of the time the things that we want are on the other side of fear and so even though it's a goal you're you're maybe wanting or you're are hoping um comes true it doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to be easy emotionally to navigate and so I feel like you're really having to navigate some rougher waters some rougher seas but you're still very focused right you're still determined um you still are, are making movement, but it might be slower and it may take a more timid approach. Uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. 
Uh, or some of you might be taking really big leaps because, you know, sometimes when we are fearful, it makes us do some chaotic things. So that also is coming forward here. Here in week one, you have the star card reversed as well as the three of cups reversed. So that's telling me that this this first week is kind of more reserved. You're taking time for yourself. It's not a super social week or if it is social, maybe you're just not feeling very like uh, in it, you know, you're not very excited about it, or you, you would rather be home or would rather not. Uh, there also is the, um, selfless charm showing up here, which is kind of why I got that feeling, like you're, like, doing a selfless or kind act towards someone, even though it's not something you want to do or it's something that would benefit you, you're still, you know, putting yourself out there or helping, um, another that you love or care about here in the, first week. The star being reversed is telling me too that you might have a harder time with self-care or just like very simple tasks can seem really difficult in the first week but it just feels um kind of like things are more overwhelming or take more out of you. Oh I just realized you can't really see all of that um, but it just sort of takes more out of you or gets to be a bit overwhelming. Uh, you also have the puzzle piece charm here um, with the uh, temporary charm or temporary fix. Uh, I also think of this too as like being a temporary moment of time that sometimes we're stuck in our feelings and it feels like this is forever. This is going to never end and it's telling me that this this piece of this week isn't going to last as long as you maybe feel like it is, um, especially something that you're dreading. It's only a temporary feeling. Other things showing up here in week two, you have the, uh, you only have two charms, you know, a charm and a, and a card here. Ooh, interesting. You've got the bell hanging over the top of the angel here. Usually there is sort of a bell or a trumpet, as you can see, in the judgment card. And so the judgment card is all about, um, one, taking off judgment of yourself and not allowing others to judge you. But it also is a card about a lot of the time I was, oh, always think of it as like a checkpoint or a level up right like in a video game or something like you're at a level up you're at a, a moment of moving up to a higher position or level here and so you're feeling called to move forward like I said you had this uh temporary feeling or whatever's happening here in the first week is temporary because by the time you hit the second week you're already like on a completely different foot things have changed your emotions have changed, your perspective has changed here, and you're kind of on a completely different path. What that path is about, I can't really tell you because not a lot came up here with it. Uh, it could be related to um, a new idea that came forward. It could be related over here with a spirit guide. Like I said, you have some sort of path that they are paving for you, but they're not necessarily wanting to share what that is until, you know, the bell is rung and they, they share it. But that's kind of showing up here. Uh, here on the moons, though, I'll go ahead and zoom you out so you can see the whole thing. But here on the moons, usually the moons, I talk about timing. So feel free to get a moon app up or to look it up on Google or something to see what moon cycle you're in right now. Uh, and then figure out timing of when this energy might be coming forward for you. But just after the new moon, but before the first quarter moon, uh, in the planning stage of the moon cycle, you have, again, the the spirit guides sort of working in your favor here. So this might be something you subtly feel or you might notice some signs coming in from spirit being like this is where this is where we're heading by week two. So you might be getting some signs and signals in week one related to this um, or recently around that uh, new moon. Here after the first quarter but before the full moon is um, a new idea or a new perspective coming forward which we talked about here in week two. And then you also have, uh, just before, it's kind of surrounding here, the release moon of the, the uh, last quarter moon. You have the Merry charm with the Merry Christmas tree. And you also have the shoe. And whenever I see the shoe, it, it, for whatever reason, actually, this shoe is making me think of, especially in, in combination with uh, the gift feeling of Christmas, of like, not necessarily wanting a new pair of shoes, but like maybe shopping enjoying a little shop for yourself or wanting to purchase something for yourself as a little release or a stress relief sort of situation happening here and that's kind of what I'm getting with that one on a very literal message otherwise it's about like does the shoe fit 
outgrowing something that doesn't fit, that you're releasing, releasing a habit or a ritual that no longer fits for you, especially since there's lots of rituals and traditions related to different holidays. So that's kind of the message that I'm getting here as well. But overall, those are all of the cards and charms that you got here today with the letters and the numbers as well. I hope that this has been useful to you and helpful to you. I would love to hear in the comments down below how it was really coming forward to you. If you know what this judgment is about, if you know what the messages that spirits are you've been sending to you from a guide of yours, I'd love to hear. And if you did enjoy this reading, definitely be sure to give this video a like. It really does help the channel and I appreciate it so much. And if you haven't already, do feel free and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to stay notified of each Monday video that I put out. As I put it in out a new video every single Monday for pick a card readings for the majority, but I also like to sprinkle in, you know, an entire charm casting master guide or a video on art magic or even an entire grimoire tour, which I'd love to do a part two to that because my grimoire is getting huge. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know. And if you'd also like to support this channel even further as well as support yourself, definitely feel free to check out the Maybond Spell and Ritual papers that I create uh, for your own magical art magic and more gratitude related rituals around Maybon. And you can also check out the uh, snail mail readings that I do where I send a letter to you in the mail. It's typewritten on a vintage typewriter. I wax seal it closed for your eyes only. And I put a lot of time, consideration, and energy into looking into any theme or question that's been on your mind. So feel free to reach out for a snail mail reading if that's something that you're interested in as well. Lots of helpful and honest reviews on my Instagram for all of the different things I've talked about here. So thank you so much for hanging out here with me today and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group three! If you've decided to choose this little piece of tiger's eye, then this is the pile for you. As we explore your next two weeks, we're going to be looking into the charms, we're going to look into the numbers and letters, tarot tiles, and an energy deck of choice being the cosmic slumber tarot. I'll have all of this as always listed down below in the description in case you're curious what we're using here today. Uh, but we're going to get right on into it, looking into your next two weeks, seeing what's coming forward. Feel free, as always, to use your own intuition here and um, use this as an exercise, too. If you guys have never really worked with charms before or if you are curious, feel free to use this as an intuitive exercise. See what comes through for you. Feel free to look into the practical side of the charms or looking very deep into the esoteric. It's really up to you. But we're going to be starting out first with your letters. So we're going to be using the letters here to look into any initials, spelling out names, looking into any dates that might come forward, um, or other oracle messages that are really important as well, um, and seeing what comes forward. So feel free to send your energy on in. We've already got a K, and we'll see what comes through. I'll be curious to see if that K is stuck, but uh, so far it has not. We do have a C though. We have C-A-T, so we already have cat showing up here. So feels kind of magical. You guys have sort of a magical feeling to your guys' card. Very mystical and magical. Maybe you guys are getting up to some magic of your own, some mischief even. Um, but yeah, I get this like almost, it also could be very like Halloween times too that you guys are just getting already excited about. Uh, but you have C-A-T-R, another T, a Z, an X, and an N. And I talked about this in group one where I felt like the X really felt like an actual X friend, an X family member, an X romantic partner coming forward here. But I don't know, I'm not really feeling that a ton from this for you guys. It feels more like an X marks the spot than it does about an actual X. So maybe you're just sort of getting... I mean, there is that magical side, so who knows what you're up to, but if you were looking for, um, you know, treasure, or you're looking for, like, literal prosperity, if you're looking for whatever you're looking for, I feel like you're gonna find it, right? We've got the, the X showing up here, the X marks the spot, um, some sort of target or focus here. Uh, you also have, what else can we really do here with the letters that are left? 
I just realized you have all consonants and one vowel. Whenever that comes up, um, I always feel like it just means that there, when it comes to your communication over the next two weeks, you might find that you're very direct or someone else is very direct with you. It doesn't necessarily mean that the communication is, um, you know, lacking, but it just can mean that it, I feel like your communication or your communication with another is just very direct, very kind of cold cut, um, snippy even, things like that, right? Just feels very like jagged, um, lots of of emotion left out. So sometimes that can be really helpful if you're like putting out a resume or you're trying to keep something from being very flowery and poetic um, and you just want to be direct, but that is the communication style that you or someone close to you uh, is really taking on. I also see a tat here, almost like maybe some of you guys are getting a tattoo, maybe you have a cat, who knows, um, but that's showing up here as well. We have tan, maybe some of you guys are going to the beach or, you know, getting a tan uh, as, as a uh, very white person that just really does not happen for me, but it's always interesting when I, when I do see it come forward here. Um, you do have like craze with the X and after, so who knows? There could be something showing up there, but for the majority, I felt the X marks the spot, but that's kind of everything that I'm really getting here. Feel free to um, see if there's something else showing up for you as well, like I said um, at the start. But we're going to be moving on to your numbers now. So similar to the letters, this time we're looking into any more significant dates that might come forward. We're going to look into uh, angel numbers, repeating numbers, and seeing if there's any numerological messages coming forward too. So let's see. Group three the next two weeks. Okay, so you've got a good little handful here with a blue number 10 being the most prominent. 10 is a number of completion and finishing something, so there is like a release or a feeling of relief for finishing a project, completing something, just getting to the end of the week, who knows. Um, the 16th might be important, the 6th. Uh, also, you have a 9 showing up here in red, another 9 showing up in red, and then a 13, or sorry, another 9 showing up in general, but it's in orange. And then you have a 13 in orange. So 13 is a number of uh, also similar to completion, but it relates to the death card. But because you have so many 9s here, it doesn't really feel related to the death card to me. It really feels more so like finishing up something and wanting to really be completed and done with it. You're just ready to move on. There could be some closure happening here over the next two weeks for you um, or a feeling of just like, oh, I'm done with that. Thank you. My goodness. I'm so ready. <laughs> um, there's just this huge relief that I keep feeling from these numbers. Otherwise, you also have, like I said, the 13th, the 19th, the 16th, the 6th, and the 9th being important dates. And even if those dates have already passed, they just may be related to the next two weeks that are important. But let's go ahead and look at your um, significant tarot card to see what the main energy is that's coming forward. If my voice gets all cracky all of a sudden, I don't know, I've got something in my throat and it just won't go away. But uh, we're going to look into that main energy that's coming forward, an overarching energy for you for the next two weeks. So let's go ahead and pull you one of these cards. So feel free to send your own energy in, connect with the cards, and let's see. The next two weeks, the main energy coming forward for you over the next two weeks. I uh, just feel like this one is stabbing me. Uh, over the next two weeks, group three. Interesting. So you have the Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles is... Um, a card of like needing to rest on something, think something over, especially since you had that X marks the spot. This is literally, there's a giant question mark in the sky, right? So this is about questioning things, trying to figure something out, looking for some clarity. Um, I always think of them as being like a farmer working on these fields and they have to wait, wait things out to find the answers. Sometimes we want answers quick and fast and um, we're 
waiting at the phone or waiting for that email or waiting for some news but sometimes we just have to be in that state of waiting and so I feel like some of you are going to be a little bit in that state of waiting questioning trying to figure something out over the next two weeks there can be a little bit of confusion or impatience for sure as this is a very patient driven card but that's kind of everything I'm really getting from this one. It's quite direct. So let's go ahead and see, as your, your uh, letters were as well, let's go ahead and see what you've got coming in with the tarot tiles on the charm mat. So if you are new here and you haven't seen this charm mat before, or if you're not new and you want a charm mat for yourself, feel free to check out all the information I have down below and through my Instagram about getting your own charm casting mat or feel free to inquire about one but this specific charm mat today we're going to be looking into a couple of different sections so anything that falls here in the center is going to be related to um, that main energy that main focus over the next two weeks then anything that falls here on the left side is going to be related to uh, week one and then here on the opposite side on the right for week two and then we'll talk about the moon phases individually for timing if they show up so we're going to begin first with the tarot tiles and then we'll get the details from the charms. So feel free to connect with the charms in here and the, the tarot charms and we'll see what, what you get. Okay, keeping it simple here. Your charms don't want to reveal too much, which is interesting because you actually got the Seven of Swords, which is all about hidden information or possibly why you're feeling a little confused. But we'll talk about each of these that are still unrevealed as we go. Uh, let's go ahead and pull you some charms first, though. So feel free to connect and let's pull some as well. So oh, interesting. All right, let's go ahead and dive in first to what you have here in the center, which is not much. We got one other card. So you definitely have things you're still figuring out or looking into. Oh, wait, wait, we've got, let me go ahead and drop this one, see where it lands. Okay, it still fell off the, the charm mat, so I'll just go ahead and pick it up. Pets might be important for some of you, though. Um, but let's go ahead and look here. So the Seven of Pentacles, again, questioning, thinking things over, impatience possibly. Uh, and then you also have the Devil Charm um, card coming forward here as well. And the Devil is all about rituals and habits that we've outgrown, right? They're, they're sort of... Um, thought patterns and mindsets that we just kind of find ourselves stuck in or continuing to spiral in or stay in um, because it's convenient, it's comfortable, it's what we know, um, even though we've outgrown them. So there's something that you're outgrowing that maybe you're questioning or trying to figure out where to go next or what would be the next um, best thing to do uh, because maybe you already are aware of this, you're already like knowing you've outgrown that, that old t-shirt but you're not you know, all you got is your sister's hand-me-downs and you haven't like figured out your own personality yet. So there's something showing up here where where you're just sort of outgrowing some sort of habit, ritual, mindset. And even though you know that, you're not necessarily sure how to make a change or where that change is. And sometimes we feel impatient with ourselves when it comes to that. So I can see how those could connect. Outside of that, though, here on week one, you have a couple of other things showing up here. Uh, like I said, you're feeling the most confused, the most um, unsure about things in the first week. Uh, confusion just keeps coming up with a, um, with your charm. So confusion being, you know, related to that giant question mark in the sky. So the biggest confusion is happening in the first week. And it's interesting because you got the least amount of charms in the first week. So it really feels like you have missing information, missing info, or just confusion. Uh, because you do have the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords is a huge card to showcase uh, sometimes miscommunication 
Um, oh, actually, I thought it was the Seven of Swords, but it's actually the Five of Swords. Interesting how I almost, I literally did kind of what you guys might be doing in the first week is misinterpreting a situation. Because uh, that's what I was going to say is sometimes the Seven of Swords can misinterpret or look at a situation and not have all of the information, but then all of the information revealed itself. So I really feel like you guys, that was chilly um anyway it gave me like goosebumps but here in the first week I feel like some of you are gonna maybe misinterpret a, a communi- some sort of communication with someone or misinterpret a situation so definitely give it a second look that's what I'm getting from that charm and then over here impatience for sure coming through with the this little mouse here uh on something that's a long haul project you or a long something that's going to be a long-term change or mindset that's just going to take a lot of time and you just got to really be patient with yourself when it comes to making these changes and growing sometimes we have to go through some awkward stages of growth um but you know that you're uh, you've outgrown it so you you've got to move forward anyway so there is this feeling of feeling a bit impatient about something that's going to take is a long term or a long um haul kind of journey here here in the second week though you have a couple of other things you've got the seven of cups alongside the um, magician card uh, and the magician represents feeling very confident feeling especially since you've got the the key of like confidence here the queen of wands but with the queen of wands here so yeah you've just got this energy showcasing like um feeling a lot more confident in the second week, trying to figure yourself out a little bit more, um, gaining a lot more resources that help you kind of figure yourself out a little bit more. I feel like there could be an identity change that's happening here, like a part about your identity that's shifting or changing. Um, you have the focus charm here too, showing up here where you're feeling like a little bit more focused, a bit more confident in the second week, feeling like you've got your head, um, kind of on straight here you are still feeling a little bit confused on the choices that are given to you but before you were feeling like you had no choices right you were just like a giant question mark in the sky so more opportunities are coming forward to help you make these changes and shifts um, related to rituals and habits that you've outgrown here uh, that I feel like you're believing in yourself a lot more in the second week and you also have the angel charm showing up here with possibly a loved one beyond the veil this is from my grandma and it's a it says I love you with a little angel so whenever I th think of this one it makes me think of my grandma so there could be someone who is who has passed who's looking out for you um kind of believing in you rooting for you in the second week so that's really sweet to see and then here on the the moons, you only have a couple showing up here. You have this tiny charm that's been in my collection or my, my set for so long. I'm going to be honest, I don't even know what this one really means um, anymore because it's just been in there so long. So feel free to look at this one and see what you see out of it. Um, it just kind of feels like maybe broken jewelry. Again, a missing piece. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to think on that one now because I haven't seen this one in so long. It just kind of sometimes is so small it gets lost there. Maybe a, a lost or missing piece. Interesting. Uh, maybe that coming forward here. And uh, that's showing up here just before the new moon and right after the, the release moon of the last quarter moon. So feel free to look at a moon app and see when this energy of like a lost piece is maybe going to come forward for you. Uh, and then you have the death card showing up here, which we talked about the death card earlier with the number 13 that you had. Um, but I felt like it was more related to finishing a goal or finishing something. So I kind of feel like that's still sh sort of showing up here, um, right after the full moon where again, you're wanting to release something or let something go. Uh, it could be related again to those habits and rituals and those mindsets that you've outgrown. But overall, those are all of the charms and cards that I have here for you, group three. I do hope that this has been useful and helpful to you in navigating your next two weeks. And if it has, do be sure to give this video a like. Let me know in the comments down below what you saw in the charms, what you saw in this interesting little one that I couldn't remember about um, in the question mark things that are showing up here, the magic and rituals as well. I didn't even talk about that, but with the, uh, the magician showing up here, again, that's another indication that some of you might be more magic 
magically inclined and doing some magic. And speaking of magic, if you guys are interested in the art magic that I do um, on this channel, the grimoire tours, or the master guide video on charm casting that I have, then definitely feel free to subscribe as I put out new pick a card readings every single Monday, and I like to sprinkle in those educational ones as well. Uh, and if you're interested in getting your own snail mail reading or a personal and private reading sent straight to you through the mail, wax sealed closed for your eyes only, and um, one that I put a lot of time and care into for a specific question or query on your mind, then definitely feel free to reach, a, reach out for one of those. Lots of helpful and honest reviews over on my Instagram. And I also have quite a few reviews for the Mabon Spell and Ritual papers that I create. So if you are more magically inclined and you want to get up to some magic, feel free to check out the paper sets that I have available for Maybon and Yule. And even Sawin, yeah, I still have some sets left for Sawin as well. So feel free to check all of that out down below. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you there. Thank you so much for hanging out here, supporting this space, and connecting with me here today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!